Welcome. Batteries. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to high school basketball on Next Level Broadcasting. We're getting ready to tip this one off tonight for the Lake Michigan Conference opener between the Traverse City St. Francis Gladiators and the Charlevoix Raiders. We're live from Charlevoix High School. We're about four minutes away from tip off. Welcome in to the Traverse City Cherry Capital Airport pregame show here. Also, correspondence with Charlevoix Bingham Insurance pregame show. Charles Strail and Dennis Halverson getting ready to get things underway between these two Lake Michigan Conference opponents. And for the last year of the Lake Michigan Conference, these two teams will be seeing each other twice in a basketball season. So, Dennis, welcome in. How are you feeling tonight? I'm doing real, real well. Looking forward to this matchup, especially Charlevoix coming off a great game with Gaylord that they just uh, just lost by the skin of their doggone teeth. And uh, I was really happy with, you know, usually the first game out, there's a lot of dust and rust all over the place. But I thought Charlevoix, especially led by Abby Wright, Carly Eaton, and Biani Collins. I thought those three there are uh, only going to grow this year, and I look forward to seeing them uh, play. Well, the both teams actually are coming in with uh, a blank win column as the Gladiators lost to Glen Lake in the opener of their season. So both teams looking to get off the schneid tonight. The Gladiators will be, you know, they had a hard-fought game to Glen Lake, who won the Class D state title last year. So that is, uh, in the world of losses, that's not a bad loss. Not a bad, not just like Charlevoix losing to Gaylord. Right. I mean, they weren't supposed to be able to play in the same gym as, as uh, that team, and uh, go figure, almost beat them. So for both these teams trying to find their first win of the season, their first conference win as well. So it's a BOGO. If whoever Another able, BOGO tonight. Uh, a BOGO for the team that's able to come out on top of this one. It should be, as these two teams square off, whether it's, in basketball, football, we saw it twice this year, and it's a very, very competitive game on all different sides of these matchups, and we're just really excited to be here. We hope you are as well. We hope you're excited to be a part of Northern Michigan basketball here, and thanks for making us a part of your Thursday evening in Northern Michigan, wherever you're watching from. You can hit us up on that text in line, 231-350. 90-40, vote for that Culver's Butter Burger basket player of the game if you're from Charlevoix. And you can vote for that Team Elmer's hardest working player of the game if you're tuning in from Traverse City. Both votes will be all tallied up by our statistician tonight, Jimmy Descamp, and we will provide those winning and awards in the fourth quarter. This is going to conclude our Traverse City Cherry Capital Airport slash Bingham Insurance pregame show here on Next Level Broadcasting. We're going to go ahead and step aside. When we come back, we'll have our national anthem starting lineups, getting everything ready to go between Gladiators and Raiders from Charlevoix after these messages. All business owner, you learn to wear a lot of hats. The custodian hat. The IT hat. And well, the you should have called a professional hat. Auto Owners takes care of your business insurance so you can take care of everything else. That's simple human sense. Ask Bingham Insurance Services in Charlevoix if auto owners make sense for you. Now's the time to fly from your Northern Michigan hometown Cherry Capital Airport, TVC. TVC Airport will get you to your dream destination anywhere in the world. Visit tvcairport.com now. My hearing aid. And the Charlevoix Raiders, the first conference game of the season here at the Lake Michigan Conference. The athletes in Lake Michigan Conference like to show their support and commitment to sportsmanship. We understand this to include respect, responsibility, and restraint. It is citizenship in action. We ask you as parents, fans, and officials to join us in making this a positive experience for all involved. Ladies and gentlemen, the privilege of this event was made possible by those who have fought and continue to fight for the freedoms we enjoy. Let us now honor and respect their efforts and our country. 
Please remove your hats and everyone able, please stand, place your hand over your heart as we proudly sing our national anthem. All right, welcome in to the broadcast. Just we're ready to get things going underway here. Starting lineups for the Traverse City St. Francis Gladiators will be getting this thing going. It's number uh, three, Hunter St. Peter. Number one, Harper Nasatis. Number 11, Sophie Hardy. 14, Sydney Peters. And number 10, Adriana Sprenger. The five starters for the St. Francis Gladiators. As they're announced there, five starters for the Raiders tonight will be Boss, Collins, Kemp, also Abby Wright, and making her way into the starting lineup tonight as well is number 13, Carly Eaton for the Raiders. I think she bought her way in after her performance uh, earlier this week. I thought she had a heck of a finish and deserves to be starting here tonight. Uh, Dennis, you made note earlier as we were talking about one player to make note of for the St. Francis Gladiators as it pertains to some genetics is the sophomore number one, Harper Nausadis. Definitely basketball blood flowing within her family. Her elder brother, Wyatt Nausadis, great player during his tenure at St. Francis High School. He kind of terrorized the Lake Michigan Conference for four consecutive years during his time on varsity. Well, he uh, was one of those kids. It's kind of an interesting story. The Traverse City Record Eagle had a, a great piece on it. He, uh, again, like you mentioned, all four years of high school, he, he raised havoc with whoever they played. Just an excellent ball player, had some size, a great shot, and just uh, probably one of the better players in this part of the state. And uh, going into his... Uh, after his senior year there this last year, he did not get any calls from Division I schools showing any interest at all. His parents decided to send him out east to a summer league, and they sent him out east, I forget which state, New Hampshire or one of those. And uh, he gets picked up by Division I school just after they were on the first game they played out there by Charles, which, which university did you say it was? He's now a member of the team at American University. American so. University. So so Wyatt, if you're watching your sister play tonight, congrats yeah. on, you know. Landing a spot over there. Yeah, and, and staying with it. You know, yeah. Ch continuing to chase your dream no matter what people might have told you along the way. And, uh, you know, con congrats for, for really seeing it through. Yeah. Congratulations and good luck uh, with your college career, not only academically, but basketball-wise. So, hey, uh, give us a text if, you, uh, if you're watching. If you're watching, that'd be kind of cool to have you get involved watching your sister play here tonight. Like we mentioned earlier, she is a starter. That's right, Nosatis in right to jump it and controlled by the Raiders. That is Carly Eaton as she finds Anna Kemp. St. Francis playing a man-to-man -man defense. Raiders go back door inside, back up to Eaton. As she makes her way into the paint, no good off the window. When it's tipped out of bounds, it'll maintain Raider basketball. Not sure who went off of there, Dennis, but so far the Raiders making a consistent effort of trying to get inside. Yep. 
Again, Charlotte coming off a great game against Gaylord. They were behind by 14 points at the half there earlier this week, and uh, they almost pulled it off and lost a real nail-biter at the end. But I thought that for the first game of the year, they played exceptionally well. St. Francis it lost in their opener of the season to Maple City Glen Lake, the Division IV state championship team from last year as Abby Wright with the drop step off of or over her left shoulder gets it to go, and that's the first basket of the contest. Raiders strike first. Wright goes to the line for the old-fashioned three-point play. Well, as Wright, Eaton, and Collins go, so go the Lady Raiders. Those three seniors are going to be a critical piece of uh, this uh, season. And, uh, again, they all had a great game earlier and look forward to them getting a little better with each game. As the Gladiators bring it back down the floor, looking to get something going here. Seven minutes and 15 seconds remaining. We're going to get that scoreboard going up for our viewers momentarily as a 15-foot jump shot goes off of the backboard. Sophie Hardy couldn't get it to drop, and it's fought for underneath, eventually being tied up. Possession arrow will favor the Gladiators. I love when the girls, I love the boys or girls, get uh, kind of scrumming there, rolling around in the paint for the ball. Yeah, it shows that they care. It shows they care and that they really want to win here tonight. Inbound pass goes to Nasadis. Gladiators looking to go back to the corner for an 18-foot jump shot. Too strong off the window. Rebound controlled by Eaton and the Raiders. And Kemp now has it, bringing it across the timeline. Over to Eaton inside the three-point line, about about two feet. Back to Abby Wright. Jump stop, fadeaway oh, jump nice. shot, and Abby Wright has a handful of points for the Raiders as she's opened up the 5 nothing lead. That one's stolen, and then a travel proceeding after the steal by Anna Kemp, so it will be Gladiator basketball. I Six. love the energy. Well, right now I would say within the first minute and a half, the Raiders have brought some serious intensity. It'll be up to the Gladiators now to match that energy and intensity. They work it around the perimeter. Nice little ball screen set. Inside it goes to Nasadis. She'll look to find an open teammate. Stepping into an open three-point in rhythm jump shot was Adriana Spranger, but it's put back up inside by Sydney Peters. Now Charlotte White not boxing out on that rebound. Way too easy for St. Francis to get another try at that shot, and they paid for it. There's a tip-away deflection. As one thing that we want to point out, Gladiators really like to run that full court press. When they score a basket or there's a dead ball, they'll be able to set up that full court press. The Raiders go inside to Bayani Collins. Offensive rebound control, no good. Nice rebound inside by Springer, and she finds an open teammate in, Jet in Hardy. And the Gladiators control now. Nice cross. That was a nice move right down the lane, but couldn't get it to go as right. Clears up the floor. Nice, nice catch by Kemp and just a little short fouled by oh, Bayani Collins. And <laughs> Bayani Collins got her money's worth. She on did. That, foul. that was no cheap foul. So it'll be gladiator ball. I'd say without a doubt that after Boyne City, St. Francis is a perennial opponent for Charlevoix, whether you're talking football, baseball, basketball. Always uh, amped up a little bit more than average when St. Francis and Charlevoix get together. And I think that goes both ways as there's a nice little elbow jump shot that's going to get the roll off of the rim. And that's Adriana Spranger with her first two points of the game. Five all scored by Wright for the Raiders. Two apiece for Spranger and Peters for the Gladiators as uh, another ball is tied up inside. One thing I noticed, Charles, like you mentioned, St. Francis throwing that uh, full court press defensively. Charlevoix so far trying to dribble through it. The, that is not a real successful um, uh, way to go about breaking the full court press. You got to pass, 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 move the ball around. And that worked out for, for Charlevoix the last time, but you can't make a living trying to dribble against a full court press. Right. There's like trying to make a living playing blackjack. Yeah, not going to happen. As, you know, if the. Gladiators said, hey, what kind of, uh, how would you like us to 
try to break that full court press. They'd probably say, try to dribble through it. Yeah, dribble, you? dribble through it. See what happens. As it's a 5-4 game now, just about halfway into this contest. We Perimeter get. swung to Nasadis and Wright. That's a good matchup there, Nasadis against Wright. As a nice offensive rebound inside by Zoe Jetter. She finds an open teammate, and Abby Wright comes out of the scrum with it, but they whistle her for a travel. I didn't see what happened there on the baseline, Dennis, but... Um, well, I think she was relentless. I mean, she went after it. Unfortunately, she uh, had a turnover after she eventually got possession of it, but I enjoyed in watching the intensity, and, and uh, she didn't give up. She wasn't going to up, give up until she got that ball back. There's a nice little mid-range jump shot, but no good. Rebounded by Collins. Got a good little crowd in attendance. The Raiders student section all out there is a jump shot. No good by Abby Wright. Gladiators now with a two-on-one break. If they want to move, and they do. Now turnover for St. Francis. Going to take it back to... Uh, Charlevoix for the inbounds. Outlet pass to Anna Kemp, gonna bring it up. St. Francis has pulled off the full court pressure. Shot is up, no good. Rebound Charlevoix. Collins with a three point try. Just off the front. Yeah, that was, that was an easy run out now for the Gladiators. All alone by herself is Adriana Spranger and she puts it up and in and the Gladiators have their first lead of the contest. Don't look now, but the Gladiators are on a 6-0 run against the Raiders after Wright scored the first five in the game. It's been all Gladiators since, Dennis. A couple of turnovers leading into that as well. Yeah, Charlevoix is back on their heels here after coming out playing pretty hot. There's a missed three-pointer. Inside it goes. Turnaround, left-handed hook. No good. Offensive rebound by Jetter, and she's fouled on the second-chance putback attempt. It'll be she, Collins again. Yeah, if that's Collins, that's her second foul. And that will be the second foul on one of the premier interior players and scorers for the Raiders, Bayani Collins. And good job by Zoe Jetter working hard inside in the paint. And she earned her trip to the free throw line because of that, Dennis. Yeah, Collins is going to take a seat on the bench there. Two quick fouls here in the first quarter. A lot of game left. Not going to get her a third before the half. So she might have seen as much action as she's going to see for the first half of this foot basketball game and uh, she's going to be missed. When she's not out there uh, we lose a lot of height. As a scrum on the floor that's Carly Eaton who comes out of the pile with it and it'll be another travel going back to the Gladiators. And Charlotte got to just slow the pace down a little bit. Let the game come to come to them. They're doing a little bit uh, um, too, trying to do too much too quick and in uh, the last couple of minutes, man, a lot of turnovers, a few fouls. They just got to dial her back a little bit. Be a little patient. Wait for the opening. One point game as the Gladiators work it around the perimeter. Looking to get something inside to Jetter, but a good three quarter front by Eaton. And that one was deflected out of bounds by Kemp. Two minutes 40. One seconds remaining here in the first period from Charlevoix High School. Gladiators on top. The Raiders 6-5. to five. Inbound. Well, trying to get it in. Almost had a five-second count as the Gladiators do finally get it in to Reese Muma. Inside ceiling is Jetter. Blocked. Swung back around the perimeter. Teeing up a three is Peters. And that one was an errant shot, and it'll be Raider basketball. Well, St. Francis gave Charlevoix a little punch in the nose here the last uh, minute or two and uh, took the one-point lead, but Charlevoix seems to have survived that and uh, going to try to get business going here again. But their defense, I tell you what, Charles and Shane, uh, Traverse City defense is pretty swarming. Yeah, you want to talk about just being able to apply pressure. That's what the Gladiators have been able to do. If, if, you're, if you're a St. Francis fan tuning in, got to like the way that they've – come back and weathered that early storm by the Raiders. St. Francis in, uh, I don't know, looks like a 1-2-3, one, one, I yeah, guess is what it is. It's kind of dropping into a 2-3 zone, trying to disguise it a little. Yeah, outside. it looked like a 1-4 there. It's like there's no 1-4 defense. 
They're trapping out high on the corners as well, Dennis. So an aggressive 2-3 zone implemented by the Gladiators. No good by Kemp inside, but Wright was fouled on the second chance opportunity, I believe. Was, yeah, uh, it'll be in the act of shooting, and it was a foul inside Kate going Jensen. against. Uh, actually, it's going against Reese Muma. It? Yeah, her Reese's second foul, so we'll see what Coach Adam Warren wants to do here after Reese picks up her second foul as that free throw attempt is good by Abby Wright. And we've got a tie game at six points apiece. The Charlotte White JV took it on the chin in the first game here tonight. They were uh, was nip and tuck back and forth, one point tied, one point back and forth, and uh, St. Francis just kind of eked it out there at the end. As Wright's second attempt is no good, rebounded inside, back out to Wright, finds a, well, kind of an errant pass. Good defense by the Gladiators, swarming to the basketball. Kemp has to find help. She does, finds an open Raider in Eaton, and that's no good. Offensive rebounded inside by Emma Meadows, and that's going to be a backcourt violation. Ooh, that's a tough play to make as it's stolen off the save attempt by Kate Jensen. She goes up, no good, oh, a lot of contact. Not a contact, no, no whistle. E either way, it was either a charge or a block, but no call. One or the other, yeah, I agree. As Jensen now has it. Nice little baseline cut inside to Muma. Find Spranger, and Spranger is fouled. And she'll, was that on the act of shooting, Dennis, or on the ground? I haven't seen uh, an indication. I think it's called on the floor. Yep. Well, so far, Charles, Charlevoix is having some difficulty getting, getting a rhythm going offensively. They are, they are uh, the, like you mentioned, St. Francis is swarming. They'll double the ball a lot of times in and uh, Charlevoix is really having some difficulty getting a good shot. There's an open shot for the Gladiators, just a little bit too strong. Rebound inside is going to be controlled by Hunter St. Peter, and possession arrow favors the Gladiators. That was a really good look. First kind of open look we've seen either way so far in this game. Yeah, so far the... St. Francis defense is ruling the roost right now. Neither team has really shown much propensity to be able to score here in this first quarter. There's a shot, no good by Springer. Good hustle rebound by Hardy. Open shot by a teammate. That one misses everything, but it's saved right into the waiting arms of Anna Kemp, and she was fouled as she was trying to find an open teammate by Hunter St. Peter. Kind of a an appropriate name going to St. Francis, huh? <laughs> right, sure. <laughs> I see what you did there, Dennis. <laughs> As we've got a 6-6 game, 49 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Four fouls for the Gladiators, three fouls for the Raiders. Wouldn't have expected any other type of outcome right now through almost eight minutes of play. Inside it goes, and that looked like it was a travel, and it was indeed so that gladiator defense continuing to force turnovers against this raider offense that's kind of uh i don't want to say stalled out but it's been in neutral for about the last six and a half minutes yeah they just can't find an offensive footing they're not getting any good looks down low they they are really uh having some trouble st francis is dominating the paint on both ends of the court here tonight uh hence the 6-6 score in the end of this uh, first quarter there's getting pretty close. Yeah, there's a rebound track down by Jensen. Inside it goes to Hardy. Another scrum on the floor. Nausadis comes out of there with it, and she's fouled. She'll go to the free throw line, I, I believe. That looked like it was going to be in the act of shooting, and Nausadis earns a trip to the free throw line. Man, ton of fouls here so far just in the first quarter. Seven total fouls, three for Charlevoix. Oh, four for Charlevoix, four for St. Francis. So, Oh, wow, never mind. I beg your pardon. It's called on the floor, so with... 11 seconds remaining. It'll be Gladiator ball baseline out of bounds. They swing it in, goes back to the corner to Nauseta. She takes the 18 foot jump shot. A little short, deflected out of bounds, saved right into a Gladiator's hands. Underneath, it's Jensen. And it looks like we're gonna go to the end of the first quarter, tied at six points apiece here from Charlevoix. Gladiators taking on the Raiders from Charlevoix, Michigan. We're going to step aside after an action-packed first quarter of high school basketball right here on Next Level Broadcasting. Second quarter action underway after these messages. 
there, Hannah again with Charlotte Boy Auto. Don't let summer pass you by. Get into a new Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram today and make this the summer event. Lease a sleek new Compass for an amazing $339 a month. Elevate your journey in a stylish Grand Cherokee for $429 a month. Or unleash the power of a 4x4 Ram pickup for $459 a month. Don't miss out in getting into your perfect ride for less at Charlevoix Auto on US 31 South near the Charlevoix Airport. Your trusted local dealership. And welcome back in to Next Level Broadcasting's coverage of high school basketball. Traverse City St. Francis Gladiators taking on the Charlevoix Raiders tonight in a Lake Michigan Conference Clash first game or first conference game of the season. And well, we want to welcome in our producer tonight, Shane Smith. He's uh, just joining us. He's got a couple of stats that he wants to talk about so far for each team. Shane, uh, leading scorer for the Raiders tonight is Abby Wright with five points. And she's got five of the six points for the, or six points. So all the points for the Raiders. She's been doing good in all areas of the floor tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's just as we've seen the last couple of seasons from Abby Wright, one of the top producers, and it's no surprise here. I will be looking to see Anna Kemp and Beyonce Collins really chip in here in the second quarter. They were always on fire last year as well. So far leading the way for the Gladiators, it's Jensen and Spranger. As Anna Kemp has it up top, finds Abby Wright in the corner. Back into the game with two fouls is Beyonce Collins, Dennis. Uh, Coach Kepke rolling the dice here with one of his starters with two fouls early on in this game. Well, they, they miss her height, and uh, they were out-rebounded by quite a bit there, Charlevoix, when she took the bench. And, good uh, good defense there by the Gladiators, forcing a Raider timeout. And while they have a timeout, we're going to tell you about our friends at Charlevoix Auto and what they've got going on right now until now, until December 21st. Stop into Charlevoix Auto and enter for your chance to win their 65-inch LED TV raffle slash giveaway. All you got to do is head into one of their two locations, either Charlevoix Auto's Chevy dealer or their Chrysler Dodge dealer right next door, and vote on which dealership you think has the better Christmas display, and then you'll be entered to win that 65-inch LED TV. Well, I, I bet you if you're in there and happen to buy a brand-new Corvette, that probably wouldn't hurt your chances. You might, you might get entered another time. <laughs> you might get your name in it more gets, than once. It gets, yeah, it gets you a few extra chances at that one. And we're back in. Raider basketball still tied up at six points apiece. Charlotte, I got to get something going offensively. They, uh, this they gladiator, just like froze. This gladiator defense has kind of oh, froze terrible. them out. As there's a nice, nice entry inside. pass into Abby Wright. Abby Wright has all eight Raider points as the Gladiators switched it up to a man-to-man -man defense there. Dennis, we'll see if that impacts the game one way or another as it's a two-point lead for the Raiders working around the perimeter for the Gladiators is Jensen. Inside it goes to Spranger. Offensive rebound or defensive board controlled by Wright and the Raiders finding Kemp up the floor. And that one was errantly thrown out of bounds. I'm not sure who the intended receiver there was. That was kind of just thrown out there. Yeah, I didn't see uh, maybe intentional grounding. Maybe, yeah, that was that was a pass to nobody. Turnover for Charlevoix. As Hunter St. Peter brings the ball up for the Gladiators, finds an open teammate in Spranger. Looking to try to get a post entry to Nasadis, but Wright doing a good job of denying that pass inside. It does go to Hardy. Pivot, nice pass out, no good on the 15-foot J by St. Peter, and it is right with the ball. Man, she's carrying these Lady Raiders right now, both on both ends, rebounding, points. Gladiators forcing baseline. Wright tees up the three-pointer, no good inside and controlled by Peters and a travel. Man, this is, you know, this is a rough game. It is. We're seeing a lot of rolling around on the floor and grabbing and carrying on. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that both of these teams attended both of those football games in uh, August and then in October. They're certainly playing very physical uh, out there. And I gotta like, I kinda like the way that the officials are letting them play physical, Dennis. Yeah, fun to watch, good matchups. Charlevoix got to find something offensively. Will that be right? Taking another three-point shot. And again, another foul. Going to be maybe some attrition issues coming 
with this one, the way they're racking them up in this first half. Yeah, that is only the first foul of the Raiders in the second quarter, but I believe they had four team fouls in that first quarter, so five total team fouls as you're doing a cumulative total. As Nausadis takes the elbow jump shot a little bit too strong, and wow, Wright tracks that one down. And she was open there for about a 10, 12-foot jumper and missed it off the heel. Coast to coast for Abby Wright. And she'll head to the free throw line. Now she's been the missed basketball so far in this one. She, uh, again, shown some hustle, some grit. Got uh, all eight points, right, for Charlevoix? All eight points for the Raiders. We got just over five and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter of play as Wright misses the first free throw. Gla Gladiator's in the midst of a little cold stretch from the field as Wright gets that one to go. It's a three-point lead for the Raiders, but the Gladiators haven't uh, scored here in the second quarter. Maybe they can get something going inside as Nasadis catches it. No good rebound fought for, and who's going to come out with it? It's Collins, <laughs> and she was bumped by Abby Wright. Yeah. That's another foul on the Raiders, and that was a, an aggressive foul by Abby Wright. We've seen a lot of players getting their money's worth for these fouls that they're getting called for. Yeah, you can see most of these fouls from doggone Atwood. They, uh, like you said, they're getting their money's worth. Awful physical game here tonight so far. Low scoring. Neither team really uh, setting the world on fire offensively. 15 total points uh, with five minutes left to go in the first half. Also want to credit uh, Reese Muma. She's got two points for the Gladiators as well. We missed that accreditation. Now Collins just picked up her third. Was that her third foul, Dennis? Yep. That'll get her another. Uh, take it to the bench. Take it to the bench. And again, they get a lot. Charlevoix gets a lot shorter with her not in there. So as it looks like they're trying to get a substitution in, but Collins is still in the game with three fouls. I'd go right at her if I was a gladiator. It looks yeah. like that's what they're trying to do as they're trying to get a post up to Sophia Hardy inside. Oh, Sophie Hardy. And I, you got to envision them trying to put Bayani Collins in a defensive position. As Hardy gets the offensive rebound, put back is good. Hustle play by Hardy for the gladiators, and they've got their first points of the second quarter. Nice play by her inside. Well, Collins was in a position to pick up her fourth there, but luckily she uh, backed off a little bit. They would miss her if she had to come out for most of the rest of this game. That'd be, uh, that would not be good. 9-8 here, Charlevoix clinging to a defensive game, right? Physical, defensive, Yeah, not, not a whole lot of offense. I think that's a great way to depict it so far, Dennis, a slugfest, if you will. Yep. As Nasadis has it on the corner, Gladiators running a little screen to free Collins up. It's back to Nasadis. She takes the elbow jump shot. No good rebound inside. Controlled by Boss, and the Raiders will push it across the timeline here with just over four minutes to go. Well, I thought Carly Eaton was mugged on that last uh, rebound that she got, but obviously not according to the guys wearing the black and white stripes. Has a nice baseline drive by Eaton, and she'll go to the free throw line, I believe. What do you think, Dennis, on the floor or yeah, I think the on the floor. I think, yep. actually, we're going to be here till midnight. This game is uh, can't go more than 10, 15 seconds without somebody getting a whistle. As both teams now with at least two team fouls as the Raiders swing this one to right back up to Kemp. She pulls the three-pointer, and that one sails out of bounds. And a substitution coming in, checking in for the Gladiators is Vivian Bramer replacing Sydney Peters. Also checking in is Zoe Jetter replacing Sophie Hardy. Well, the last time Collins took the bench with uh, two fouls, St. Francis kind of got back into it a little bit. They, they uh, uh, now with Collins on the, on the bench again, look for St. Francis to be able to make a little hay here. Charlevoix gets a lot shorter with her not on the, on the floor. Inside it goes, and nice jump shot made by the Gladiators. It was Bramer knocking it down, and the Gladiators have the lead back. Oh, 
still miss the puppy, man. Oh. Inside rebound, tough rebound by Pedisic. And the Gladiators now with an opportunity to go up by a couple more points with the basket. There's a nice baseline, J by Collins. Yeah, and they go they, up by three. What did they tell you? They missed Collins' length in there. And it didn't take St. Francis long to get back uh, in the offensive scheme of things with uh, Collins not able to play with those three fouls. Very balanced scoring so far for the Gladiators. They have six players that have each scored a bucket apiece. And we've got one that scored eight of nine. Correct. So two different ways to play basketball. We'll see which style prevails as a jump ball, the possession error will favor the Gladiators. I tell you, Charles, I haven't seen a defense like this. Uh, St. Francis is like flypaper on Charlevoix. Charlevoix can hardly breathe. It's just a swarming, relentless defense. They're not all that big. You know, you've got uh, uh, Nasadis, who's probably the, the tallest gal, but other than that, you know, not a real physical looking team, but man, can they play defense? As Riley Collins has it on the far side perimeter, being guarded closely by Emma Meadows, the lengthy junior for the Raiders. And three point game so far remaining in the second quarter, about two minutes, 40 seconds. Well, I think Wright's got two fouls herself, so she's not completely out of the woods here in the first half. Gladiators try to get that one over to Collins, and that was a ill-advised turnover. But a lot of these turnovers for the Gladiators, Dennis, dead ball variety, so it gives them an opportunity to set their defense. And their defense has been really good. You know, Charlevoix's got to try some ball screens or a little more ball movement or something. They just cannot get a decent look at In the basket. Inside it goes to Weglandowski. Good gladiator defense of shutting off the post entry as Kemp puts up the floater. Greg Landowski, the rebound, brought it down and got away with it Man. as Meadows tees up the three. Got there it. There you go. Nothing but the net, and we're tied up at 12. Charlevoix needed that. B A D. That's bad for those that uh, <laughs> didn't put that one together yet as it's uh, tied at 12 apiece right now. Good game between Gladiators and Raiders as we kind of anticipated. Back out top to Nauseta. She pulls the jump shot and drops it in for two. You know, Abby Wright was playing off her just a little bit and Nauseta made her pay. First basket of the contest for Nauseta as Boss breaks the pressure. Wright tees up the three-pointer. No good off the backboard. Kemp with the offensive board, swung out to Meadows. Stolen away, fast break for Vivian Bramer going up against Abby Wright, right at her and can't get it to go. Smart play by Bramer to attack Wright with those two fouls, Dennis. But yeah. Wright did a good Wright, job. Wright didn't bite. She kind of backed off a little bit. And yeah, smart play by her as Kemp puts the head fake on, slams on the brakes and it's no good on the baseline jump shot. And Wright tees up another three-pointer. That one's short, rebounded inside by Nausadis, brought it down, and in this game, you cannot bring the ball down below your waist or it's gonna be tied up. Yeah, he can't be dribbling down there either. You gotta, you gotta go up strong or pass, kick it back out, just it's, can't. It's crazy how physical and how quick defenders are to you know, kind of dig down and get a tie ball. Seen about five hell ball possession arrows so far in this game. As Boss inbounds to Kemp. Boss is going to take the three pointer. No good. Rebounded by Jetter. And the Gladiators in a hurry. Pushing tempo. Trying to go coast to coast was Jensen. And Boss controls with 30 seconds remaining. It's still 12 to 12. Yeah, I'd like to see a little. A little action offensively from Carly and she's got the ability to score from uh, from about anywhere. She's gonna thought about putting him up there, moves up a little bit and way off. Yeah, Wiglandowski was down there fighting for the rebound with Nasadis, and I think they're going to say that one was deflected or the shot was partially blocked. One or the other. Uh, Gladiators looking around, kind of scratching their heads, thinking that that was just a air ball. Yeah. But Raiders maintain possession somehow. Charlotte might be playing for the last shot. Wright puts it back up. 
You either play for the last shot or the best shot right now as Voss gets the offensive rebound with 6-5, 4. And shots up, no good. Anna Kemp couldn't get that one to drop. So after 16 minutes in the books, Gladiators on top, 14-12 to over the Charlevoix Raiders. Wow, what a game so far. We'll have our first half synopsis and our second half look ahead when we come back here on our halftime show brought to you by our good friends at Charlevoix Auto. We're going to step aside and hear from our sponsors and be back with that Charlevoix Auto halftime show after these messages. Hannah again with Charlevoix Auto. Don't let summer pass you by. Get into a new Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram today and make this the summer event. Lease a sleek new compass for an amazing $339 a month. Elevate your journey in a stylish Grand Cherokee for $429 a month. Or unleash the power of a 4x4 Ram pickup for $459 a month. Don't miss out in getting into your perfect ride for less at Charlevoix Auto on US 31 South near the Charlevoix Airport. Your trusted local dealership business owner, you learn to wear a lot of hats. The custodian hat, the IT hat, and well, the you should have called a professional hat. Auto Owners takes care of your business insurance, so you can take care of everything else. That's simple human sense. Ask Bingham Insurance Services in Charlevoix if auto owners make sense for you. This is Charles, founder of Next Level Broadcasting. Interested in advertising on our channel? Get a hold of us. And next week, this commercial could be yours. There, Hannah again with Charlotte Boy Auto. Don't let summer pass you by. Get into a new Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram today and make this the summer event. Lease a sleek new compass for an amazing $339 a month. Elevate your journey in a stylish Grand Cherokee for $429 a month. Or unleash the power of a 4x4 Ram pickup for $459 a month. Don't miss out in getting into your perfect ride for less at Charlevoix Auto on US 31 South near the Charlevoix Airport. Your trusted local dealership. Okay, welcome back into the Charlevoix Auto Halftime Show here on Next Level Broadcasting. Gladiators on top of the Raiders 14-12. And with our scoring update, we're going to send it over to our broadcast partner, Shane Smith, for the update on the scores book for both teams so far after 16 minutes of play. Shane, over to you. Well, thank you, Charles. I came to this game a little bit late tonight, so I'll give you the best numbers that I can so far. Abby Wright, I know this for sure. She has scored nine of the Raiders' 12 points so far in what has been a very exciting first half for her, although she does have to be careful at two fouls. Emma Meadows. It's the only other one so far on the Raiders squad that was able to score, and she came in with a pivotal three-pointer in order to keep this game close between the two teams. Foul trouble is hitting Bayani Collins, who's typically been one of Charlotte's best shooters to date, so we'll see how that affects her the rest of the game. She'll be spending a fair amount of time on the bench, I'm sure, unless if she can um, get some more success there on the basket. And then we've got uh, Springer, Hardy, Collins, and Ostatis with two points apiece so far that I've been able to keep track of when I came into this game a bit late. Now we do have some foul trouble with three of their players as well, Muma, St. Peter's, and Hardy with two apiece so far. So those five or yeah, five players leading the scoring for the Gladiators at two points apiece so far. That's 12 of their 14 points coming from a multitude of players and very well balanced scoring approach right now for the Gladiators as they've been 
really, really locking down the Raider offense with their stifling defense. Dennis, we talked in the halftime break just how good that this Gladiator defense has been. I mean, we've seen some fouls, and they're, both teams are playing physically, but this Gladiator defense has really, really taken the air out of the auxiliary players for the Raiders. We've seen Wright have a good game, but you know the other four players on the court for the Raiders, that defense has really been impacting those players, I think more so than Wright. Yeah, the Raiders have not been able to get any separation defensively, and we know how important that is in basketball or hockey. you, you got to get some room to maneuver, and Charlevoix has just not figured out how to give get space for that uncontested shot. They have had absolutely no luck down low, especially with Collins out probably for the most of the third quarter. They really get a lot shorter with her out, which uh, already is you know, challenging. Getting rebounds down in the paint. Uh, St. Francis is triple teaming the ball down there. They just cannot find a rhythm. You know, you, you kind of look forward to, you know, maybe seeing some screens or something in that nature just to, just to free somebody up for a wide open jumper. But Charlevoix hasn't even been able to pull that off. So uh, um, Collins on the bench is going to be a problem. And uh, the lack of scoring from some, some of the other, somebody else on the, on the Raider team is something they're going to have to talk about there in the locker room right now. Yeah, and if you're in the Gladiator locker room right now, you're talking about just continue doing what you're doing. You got to imagine that some of those open jump shots are going to fall for them. If one thing that's an old cliche regarding sports, and it's used in football, it's used in basketball, and that is defense travels. So when you've got a good defense, you can take your show on the road, and you don't have that same type of performance volatility that you might have if you're a team that's dependent on the three-point shot. Whereas if you can bring your defense and show up and play somebody in their gym and force turnovers and create bad shots, you're going to have a chance in pretty much every game, and that's what the Gladiators have been able to do so far through 16 minutes of play here. Not really playing a great offensive game as neither team is really you know, shooting the lights out right now, but the only foul trouble to speak of for the Gladiators is Muma with two fouls, so the Gladiators in a little bit better shape than the Raiders so far as it pertains to the fouling situation, but even though there were a lot of fouls called in that first half, Dennis, didn't see a lot of free throws. I mean, it was kind of strange. A lot of those fouls were called on the ground. Yeah, that's that's true. The other thing I think is interesting is St. Francis has had the open shots. They just missed them. Right. Charlevoix has not had the open shots. All their shots have basically been very contested. So, and, so I'd know, say a little concerning for the Raiders given the fact that St. Francis has been missing the open shots. The Raiders... Haven't, had, Haven't any had many due to that defense of the Gladiators. And, and uh, you know, St. Francis isn't a big team. They got uh, not, that now Sadis probably is a, the the longest girl on, on the team. But, man, they are just like uh, amoebas like on defense. They just swarm, swarm the ball. And, and Charlevoix just has not found an offensive rhythm in the first half. Everything's contested. Uh, they can't get any space and they have not done so well on the boards. Shane, any last words before we head out to commercial before starting our third quarter? Just uh, best of luck to both teams. I know the Gladiators are about as tough as it gets defensively, so looking for the Raiders to try and penetrate a little bit more. Uh, but the Gladiators just need to keep doing their thing, keep those open shots flowing. Hopefully they'll get some practice in here before the half begins. Uh, just as we've said, they've missed a lot of easy looks, and that's what allow the Raiders to keep this game close. It'll be interesting to see how the second half plays out. All right, we're going to step aside when we come back. Third quarter just around the corner. This is high school basketball on Next Level Broadcasting. We'll be back after these messages. There, Hannah again with Charlotte Boy Auto. Don't let summer pass you by. Get into a new Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram today and make this the summer event. Lease a sleek new Compass for an amazing $339 a month. Elevate your journey in a stylish Grand Cherokee for $429 a month. Or unleash the power of a 4x4 Ram pickup for $459 a month. Don't miss out in getting into your perfect ride for less at Charlevoix Auto on US 31 South near the Charlevoix Airport. Your trusted local dealership. 
Now's the time to fly from your northern Michigan hometown Cherry Capital Airport. TVC. TVC Airport will get you to your dream destination anywhere in the world. Visit TVCAirport.com now. All right, here we are. Welcome back in to the third quarter. We're underway here, Gladiators and Raiders. It'll be Gladiator ball to start this one out. As Raider defense looks like they're extending this to like a 1-3-1 zone look. Inside it goes to Hardy on the opening possession, and she'll draw a foul and go to the free throw line against that. I thought it looked like a 1-3-1 or a 1-2-2 zone defense for the Raiders. Yeah, kind of a surprise Collins back in there uh, starting the first or second half. So Coach Kepke rolling the dice a little bit. We saw that with uh, with uh, Gaylord the other night. That coach there was rolling the dice and came up snake eyes for him on, on playing that uh, their big guy with three fouls in the second half, and uh, he might have regretted doing that. But Yeah, he, that kind of changed the trajectory of that game. That did a lot. So Collins back in playing with three fouls. There's the... Second free throw, no good by Hardy, but she tracks down her own rebound, looking to find a teammate as we're back in about 20 seconds into the third quarter. And it's stolen away inside by Collins, intercepted by the Raiders, and they have an opportunity to tie or take the lead. Well, Charles, I don't think Charlevoix can, can win this without Collins being on the floor. I, I just, uh, well, they, they like her size. She is down there on the boards, you know, all the time. But obviously, she's going to have to adjust her game now. Collins gets it on a kick out from right. Good closeout by Nausadis and the Gladiators as they're really packing in their defense to the paint, not allowing the Raiders to get much inside or via dribble penetration, just like that, as that p driving lane was shut off by Sydney Peters' help defense. Well, look at so Sophie Hardy yeah. play um, right. Abby Wright. I mean, Fly paper. And there's a nice deflection by Hardy as she's not letting Wright get a touch inside. Raiders go high, low, and Wright oh, pays perfect. it off at the window. And we're tied up once again at 14 apiece. Well, Abby Wright has a size advantage over number 11, Sophie Hardy, but Sophie Hardy has been playing extremely hard good defense. Yep. Good little basket cut, but stolen away on the deflection by the Raiders. Two turnovers to start the third quarter by the Gladiators. And Raiders looking to take advantage as right slices. Yeah, no into, foul there. Yeah, slices into the lane. Collins with the offensive rebound. Coach Kepi hard to rub in his eyes there. He thought there was, and so did I. There was a foul there on that drive, but obviously not. Didn't hear a whistle. Good defense played by Peters to get through that ball screen as she's harassing the ball handler, and Peters gets a deflection, gets a steal. It's a two on two break. Inside it goes and blocked from oh, behind man. by Anna Kemp. Nice recovery. She got the block against Hunter St. Peter. I thought that was going to be a Yeah, that had basket. trouble written all over it. And kick out to the corner. That's Eaton being guarded by Spranger. Inside it goes to right again on the high-low pass. There you go. And she gets it off the window again. And the Raiders are up by two points now with a 4 nothing start to the third quarter. Again, Sophie Hardy is is drawn. Um, Abby Wright. Yep. The Ra the Raiders drop into the two three zone defense now. Inside on the short corner it goes, but Spranger couldn't make it on the baseline. Abby Wright with a rebound. She's going to try to go coast to coast. A lot of contact. Track down. Who's going to come out with this one? Possession arrow favors the Raiders and another jump ball tie up and. Well, the Raiders can extend it to potentially a two-possession lead right now with a basket or made three-pointer. Gladiator defense trying to get a stop. Yeah, Abby Wright kind of starting the second half like she did the first uh, part of the game. On fire? On fire. As Wright being guarded once again very tightly by Hardy, and it's a turnover stolen away by Collins. Excuse me, St. Peter with the steal. As Nasadis tees up the three-pointer, no good. Inside rebound and going to the free throw line will be Adriana Spranger. She got the offensive rebound and 
earned that trip to the free throw line, Dennis. As and you're not going to like this one. Guess who picked up her fourth foul? Well, depending on who you're tuning in for and rooting for in this one, you're either going to like it or not like it as Bionic Collins picks up her fourth personal foul. And I don't know if head coach Kepke sees it or not right now as he doesn't have a substitute coming in for Collins. Boy. Uh, I don't know if his bench coach notified him, or, but right. Collins staying in the game right now with four fouls, four minutes, 39 seconds to go in the quarter as Spranger knocks down both free throws, and she's got four, or excuse me, yeah, four points now on the contest as timeout. It's a actually not a timeout, but a foul, foul call. called yep. against the Gladiators. Well, again, Coach Kepke <laughs> really rolling the dice now with four fouls on one of his two stars out there. Yeah, he's pacing a little bit more than usual. I would so. be too. As the uh, Gladiators now in a zone defense as well. Both teams kind of mirroring each other. Actually, that's just an aggressive trapping zone for the Gladiators as Kemp breaks through it, finds Collins in the baseline, shots up and in. And early dividends being paid to the Raiders with Kepke keeping her in the game with four fouls as she makes the, as she makes the baseline jump shot. Michelle Boy playing a 2-3 zone. One way you can beat the zone or if you're not shooting from the outside, it's one defense you're going to see a lot of if you don't have a long shot. Now Sadis working the baseline, gets to the short corner, has it deflected out of bounds by Boss. And, you know, these teams are very similar, Dennis. I mean, very similar in terms yeah. of their physical approach, their grit. Um, a lot of energy. A lot of energy. I don't. I don't really think either of these teams has. Oh, a, look at that steal! Stolen by Eaton, and then stolen right back. Oh no! By Peters. It's a three-on-two break for the Gladiators. Nice catch by Nasseda. She takes the jump shot. No good. Rebounded by Collins, playing with those four fouls. As I was saying, Dennis, not neither one of these teams really has a knockdown dead eye shooter. No. But the tenacity that they each play defense with, it's gonna win a lot of games, these two squads, as Wright puts her head down, drives to the lane, and is fouled. She had an opening there. That was the first time really St. Francis gave her that much space to drive the for for the hoop and she, you know, one thing I'll say about that, Abby Wright noticed that she had a clear shot, clear line of the basket, even though she didn't uh, make the basket, she got the next best thing, which is a foul. So Wright goes to the free throw line, Raiders up by two points. First free throw is good, right down the middle for the Raiders. Couple of substitutions for the Gladiators checking in will be Jetter, Collins, and Muma. So Jetter, Collins, and Muma coming in for the Gladiators. No substitutions for the Raiders. Coach Kefke rolling with what he's got out there on the floor. Right second free throw is no good. And it's cleared off the boards by the Gladiators. Bringing it up the floor is Sydney Peters. Gladiators looking to crack this Raider defensive zone. Outside it goes to Collins. No good offensive board by Muma. And she'll go to the free throw line. A couple times we've seen Reese Muma kind of sneak her way into the paint, get those offensive rebounds, Dennis. That's the second occasion she's been able to do that. And she's not that big, you know, so she's, again, one of those gritty players that is just, you know, plays 6'8 there in the paint. Right. And uh, came down with that one, got rewarded with a foul, and got secondarily rewarded with the free throw shots here. First free throw attempt by Muma. Rolls around, hits the backboard, and eventually drops in. So we're back to a two-point game. And how many times have you heard me say it tonight, but... A basket, a stop and a basket, and the Gladiators would take the lead. And the second free throw is no good. Tapped out of bounds. Still no call on whose ball it's going to be, and it's Gladiator basketball Boy, off of the deflection. That, so was, it, a, that was a tough call. It could turn out to be a four-point swing if the Gladiators are able to knock down a three-pointer. Still only one three-pointer made in this game. It looked that like was, a travel. She moved her pivot foot. Get, Getting away with the travel was Spranger. Inside it goes to Jetter, and Collins playing with four fouls has that rebound. Man, I'd imagine any time Collins is in the play, Reese Kepke, head coach for the Raiders, is just, yeah, he's just holding his breath. That's why he's making the big money, though. Not. As uh, there's a backdoor oh. pass, and Ava Boss 
couldn't track that one down. Oh, we need to get Carly Eaton involved somehow. She was, uh, I, I would say, probably one of the stars that kind of almost brought that one home earlier this week. we got to get her in the game a little bit. Got to get her fired up. I'd say for the Gladiators, Dennis, they want to try to get a baseline jump shot to Spranger right now. She's, I would have envisioned the biggest offensive threat on the floor right now, playing inside in the paint as the Gladiators turn that one over. Third quarter, seeming like it's taking a long time, about two minutes, 20 seconds to go as that one's caught by Eaton. And she drives in, no good. Nice rebound by Jetter inside as it's outletted to Sydney Peters. Up the floor it goes to, oh, Spranger, I think got fouled there, Dennis, and uh, no call, so the Raiders dodging a bullet. Yeah, the refs are kind of letting it go a little bit. As that one's kicked out to Boss. Good defense by Peters. And Peters now trying to get that shot back. Off the glass and in. So Peters going to the free throw line for an old fashioned three point opportunity. And she got the steal, the bucket. Now an opportunity to take the lead back for the Gladiators. This was a two point game at halftime and it's tied at 19 right now. I don't foresee this game getting out of hand either side. No, I don't either. Peters, like you said, uh, trying to finish off the trifecta here. It's tie ball game, buck 48 to go in the third here. Charlevoix still has not what I would consider found their offensive, uh, oh, anything yet. Offensive rebound inside by Spranger, couldn't get it to go, and on a diving save attempt, Anna Kemp stepped on the out of bounds line, so the Gladiators will maintain possession. An opportunity here now with a four point or a five point possession with a three pointer for the Glads. As three pointers up, three pointers good. Just like that, Adriana Spranger puts the Gladiators up by three, and it was a five point possession. Yep, she got behind the defense there and had a wide open look at a three and didn't mistake, make a mistake on it. As the three was fired up by Emma Meadows, rebounded by Peters, and Gladiators now can go up by two possessions with the basket. Peters found Jetters, and it's been an 8-0 run in the last two minutes, 30 seconds. Springer let go of another three-pointer, but that one was no good and tracked down by Eaton for the Raiders. As I said, an 8-0 run over the last two minutes, 30 seconds for the Gladiators, Dennis, and uh, Raider, Raiders kind of reeling right now back on their heels. Yeah, and typically you see a team, uh, you know, when they don't get the rebound, the offensive rebound, they just run back to defense. St. Francis does not do that. They do not give up on the ball that easily. And uh, gr great example there, they tied up and got the ball back on, on the uh, possession arrow. But, man, they just will not give up. They're ball hawks. They, they just are relentless, whether they're playing offense or defense. Zoe Jetter to inbound. It's oh. deflected, stolen right back. Inside it goes to Jetter. She misses it inside. A scrum for the rebound, and I think a foul is going to be called against Riley Collins as Meadows looked like she had that ball pretty firmly secured. Yeah, Charlevoix having trouble finding the handle on that. Bounced around between two or three Lady Raiders. Checking back into the game for the Gladiators is Sophie Hardy. She'll replace Zoe Jetter inside. Three-point game, Gladiators on top. Yeah, Abby Wright played the whole game so far. She'll Abby. drive inside, put up the floater. Rebounded is, well, I shouldn't say it was a hell ball. Possession arrow favors the Raiders, and it's, you got to be tough to go inside the paint tonight. I wouldn't want to go down there. Man, there's some elbows and rolling around. And As the Raiders inbound this with 44 seconds remaining, that's stolen. Coming down in a hurry is Reese Muma. Puts it up, no good. Offensive rebound, controlled by Spranger. Back up top, stolen away by Kemp. A collision, they're like playing No fall, oh yeah, the back guy. The, the ref closest to the play doesn't call it. The, guy, the ref farthest away from the play calls a foul there. It, it kind of looked like pinball out on the <laughs> basketball court there for a brief moment as that foul was called uh, against, I believe it was called against Riley Collins. It's her second. Foul. Yeah. Next foul will put these either team in 
the penalty and shoot two free throws if there's a foul in the third quarter. Kemp finds Eaton. Wright being guarded by Muma. Crossover by Wright down the lane. Scoop shot, no good. Rebounded by Spranger, but baseline official said that she traveled before putting the ball down. Yeah, a little uh, helter-skelter here the last few minutes. And I'm sure the Traverse City defense has contributed to that. Charlevoix has just not got in the offensive groove. A lot of turnovers, just like another Charlevoix turnover, just, uh, you know, kind of uncontested turnovers. Um, yeah, the, the Gladiator defense is, I would say, the driving force behind why they're up right now. As a three-pointer pulled, round, no good, off the uh, rebound, controlled, and getting the foul and the bucket inside is Sophie Hardy, and she'll go to the free throw line for the three-point play. So Gladiators flexing their muscle a little bit here before the end of the third quarter. That's Sophie Hardy going to the line for a three-point play potentially. And Abby Wright picked up her second foul. Hardy's free throw is a little bit too strong, but gets the friendly roll and drops it in for the three-point play. It's a six-point game now as Kemp pushes it up the floor, fires up a three-pointer before the end of the quarter, and no good. So the Gladiators are up on the Raiders after three quarters of play, 25-19. to 19 Here on Next Level Broadcasting, coverage of high school basketball. We're going to step aside for a quick 15 second timeout and be back with what we think might happen in the fourth quarter coming up right after this. Now's the time to fly from your Northern Michigan hometown Cherry Capital Airport, TVC. TVC Airport will get you to your dream destination anywhere in the world. Visit tvcairport.com now. All right, welcome back in. Fourth quarter now between Gladiators and Raiders here on Next Level Broadcasting. And it's been a really entertaining game so far. The Gladiators ended that third quarter on an 11-0 run to take the lead and go up 26 to 19, excuse me, 25 to 19. And inside is where they really made their mark. Three-pointer was made by Spranger and, oh, excuse me, uh, Sophie Hardy. Got the old-fashioned three-point play at the end of the third quarter. And because of that, they find themselves up six points over the Raiders, and it'll be Gladiator basketball to start the fourth quarter. Well, if you could look at the analytics here in Lenny and Squiggy are awake down in the trailer, I think you'd find that Traverse City St. Francis has been most effective when Collins is on the bench. Spranger drives through the middle of the Raider defense and flips up the six-foot shot and gets it to go. A nice athletic shot made by Spranger, and the Gladiator lead grows to eight points. That will be a mountain to climb for Charlevoix, who has not shown much offensive capabilities here tonight. Carly Eaton has it, finds Anna Kemp. Kemp being forced left by the Gladiator defense and she puts up the floater and drops it in. I believe that's her first basket of the contest, Dennis. Says. I believe you're right and they've really missed a few points from her. As another three pointers putting up by Peters and it's fought for and controlled by the Praetors. It was Ava Boss who came out of there with it and was it deflected or was it a foul? We're getting an explanation from Foul, foul on St. Francis. You know, if this was a tightly uh, roughed game, which I would say that this has not been, I think Traverse City St. Francis would have trouble in that environment, the kind of game they play. I think um, going, you know, Bayana Collins probably would have fouled out if it was really, yeah. really tightly officiated. Collins back in there with four fouls. I don't think uh, Coach Kepke has much choice at this point than to have her out there. That ball was deflected up top by Vivian Bramer, so it'll be Raider basketball sideline out of bounds. Yeah, well, we haven't had much in action on the uh, call-in line, text-in yeah, line. Yeah, waiting, waiting for a little action on the text-in line, 231-350-9040, and who do you think that player of the game is going to be as Collins pulls the three-pointer and drops it down the hatch, and it's a three-point game once again. 
after Collins makes the three-point jump shot, her fifth point of the contest. Now St. Francis working against nice little pop pass inside on the pick and roll. Hardy wasn't able to pay it off yeah. and right with the board, and I think that foul is going against Sophie Hardy. Yeah, I think you're right. Her third personal foul, so a couple players right now kind of on the verge of having significant foul trouble. Nice cut by Carly oh. Eaton. Uh, rebounded by Nausadis as she finds Bramer. Bramer now with the head of steam rolling like down travel. the floor. There's a three-point by. Well, the three-point shot was missed by Spranger and controlled by Bramer on the hustle play. Back inside, pirouetting on the jump shot. Offensive rebound by Hardy. No good. Abby well, Wright. Well, they should call the cops, man. She was mugged down there underneath that basket by both of those St. Francis players. Number five and number 11 there, I thought uh, those looked a lot like 90-day misdemeanors to me. Oh, I knew that one was going to be coming out, Dennis. As uh, as a former Charlevoix chief of police, <laughs> you know, that one usually usually makes an appearance in a hard-fought, rugged... First time this year. A hard-fought, rugged game as we've got out here. I mean, you got to bring your hard hat if you want to play in this game, and that's certainly been the case as it's a three-point lead for the Gladiators doing a good job of just... Staying in front of the Raiders just enough as there's an inside pass to Abby Wright, and we're back to a one-point game. These two teams going back and forth, kind of trading haymakers, standing in the middle of the ring, just letting the other team have it, if you will. Well, the last minute or two is the best offensive play we've seen in Char from Charlevoix all night long. And there's a nice drive inside by Spranger, but no good. Tracked down by Boss, and a timeout taken by Raider head coach Reese Kepke and why we have an opportunity. We're going to tell you about our some of our sponsors tonight that are making this game possible wherever you're tuning in from. Thank you for making us a part of your Thursday evening. Yeah, who needs Thursday night football when you got girls basketball in northern Michigan? I mean, the crew of Next Level Broadcasting is uh, happy to have you hanging out with us on a Thursday night. I want to let you know about the Traverse City Cherry Capital Airport. When you're looking to fly, fly TVC. If you're a snowbird and you're looking to try to get out of northern Michigan at any point in time in the next two months, well, Dennis, I don't want to say you're a stereotype there, but you just uh, got in and out of northern Michigan, went to Aruba, and came back into Cherry Capital Airport. So, you know, well, The people there are always so friendly. It's easy to get in and out of. Aruba was a mess. Um, that airport there had about 50 pounds of sugar in a five-pound bag. So when I got to finally landed in Traverse City from O'Hare, I was like, man, I was home even though I was still 50 miles away from my house. I felt like I was home. So good job there, Cherry Capital Airport in Traverse City. Glad you're a sponsor. Quick little update. It's been a 7-2 to run by the Raiders in the last two minutes of game time that have brought this game to within one point. It'll be Ava Boss to inbound it to Anna Kemp. And with under five minutes to go, we're getting right down to crunch time between these two conference opponents. We'll see what happens next as the Raiders have this possession. Five starters on the floor for the Raiders. Bayani Collins tees Ooh, up the three. Close. No good off of the hand of Anna Kemp. So it'll be Gladiator basketball up by one point. I was feeling a little bad about this for Charlevoix there for a few minutes. I didn't think they had the offensive uh, capability tonight to get back in this one. And I, I was proved wrong. As it's Sidney Peters who now controls for the Gladiators. I'd say both fan bases are probably on the edge of their seats watching this one. As a nice drive into the paint and an errant pass. It was Kate Jensen who was trying to find Sophie Hardy on the wing. So turnover by the Gladiators. Raiders take possession once again with an opportunity to tie or take the lead on this possession. Gladiators going back to their man-to-man -man aggressive man-to-man -man in trapping defense. Stolen oh, by pass. Sophie Hardy. Good job of anticipating that entry pass to Wright and the Gladiators back in transition. I don't know if that ball was kicked, but stolen by the Raiders. Abby Wright now with it. It's a two-on-four break. Wright will pull it back out, and the Raiders will set something up. Up top it goes to Kemp. Charlevoix kind of probing that St. Francis defense, looking for an open shot. There's a pass inside to oh, right. Oh, in and out. Around and down. Good rebound by Sophie Hardy as she had to track that one down against two Raiders. And 
Gladiators with an opportunity to extend this possession, or excuse me, the lead. One point game, and I mean, I can tell that you're even on the edge of your seat here, Dennis. Yeah, this is a good one. As travel called against Spranger. Coming in for the Gladiators, some, uh, some fresh bodies as this game, not a lot of substitutes so far for the Raiders. We'll see if it becomes an attrition thing. Gladiators continually bringing in fresh substitutes. Yep. yep. Maybe that has an impact in the last three and a half minutes as we approach the end of this game. If I was Abby Wright, I'd be gassed right now. She's played the whole game, and this has not been a slow game. Very physical, fast-paced. Kemp drives baseline. Oh, we needed that. No good. Deflected out of bounds. It'll be Gladiator basketball, and that's what the Glads needed. Actually, it's funny how basketball is a very, very zero-sum game. You either make it or you miss it. One team greatly benefits from a make, or the other team greatly benefits from the miss. And the Gladiators benefit from that miss as they can now extend this lead to three or four points with a basket. Now, been a lot of good games. Tuesdays against Gaylord was good. Tonight is an excellent basketball game. And we're back here tomorrow night when Harbor Springs comes to Raiderville. As Spranger missed that 15-foot jump shot. Abby Wright with it now in a hurry. And right Euro steps and is called for the travel. <laughs> I like that Euro step. That was like uh, that was three and a half, maybe four steps there for Abby, but who's counting? Obviously the refs were. Well, sometimes that Euro step can be synonymous with a travel, depending on uh, what the referee's interpretation of the rules are. As Sophie Hardy has it for the Gladiators, two minutes thirty seconds to go. No basket scored in the last two minutes of play for these two teams. Actually, no points, I should say. Hardy is going to fight through contact, up and in, counted in the foul. Hardy trying to take over this basketball game. Well, and she she split the defense. Did you see that? And they yeah. thought the players out there for Charlevoix thought she might have traveled. She did a good job of keeping that pivot foot placed on the floor. So that's actually a move that a lot of post coaches will teach. When you split the defense and you just keep that pivot foot down, they give you the benefit of the doubt often. Yep. And so Hardy looking to complete her three-point play. No good. It is 29 to 26. And... Coach Kepke wants to take a moment and talk about it. Well, as, fat, uh, as hot as Charlevoix was there for a minute or two, they went just as cold. And, and uh, just well, let, Charlo or let Tra uh, Traverse City St. Francis back in the game here. And while we have a moment here with two minutes, 24 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, we want to tell you about our friends at Bingham Insurance located downtown Charlevoix. They're a local auto owner's insurance company. Bingham Insurance, proud sponsor of basketball here on next level broadcasting let me tell you what when the unthinkable happens or something that you just can't foresee happening that's all the more reason why you need to have a local insurance provider like Bingham Insurance an auto owners representative company they can cover your home your auto your life and your dog your dog yep that's so big that's big now pet insurance pet insurance car insurance i mean we're almost umbrella umbrella insurance. yeah umbrella insurance and as you know i want to knock on wood here we're almost out of the woods for deer season in terms of running into them with your vehicle so but for any type of information you can head on over to bingham insurance downtown tell them we sent you and they can get you all squared away for covering you for the unthinkable from happening has two minutes, 20 seconds left in this game. Inside it goes to right. Nice catch as she had to turn around for that one. Swarming defense by the Gladiators. Spranger with a good closeout. Right with the jump shot. Got it. It's a one-point game as right. Yeah, a little inside-outside action there. Paid off. And this game is feeling really close right now as it is indicative of the scoreboard. 29-28. to 28. The Gladiators on top. And that one is good catch by Jetter, but it's thrown away looking to find Hunter St. Peter on the backdoor cut and Raiders can take the lead with a basket here. Gladiators looking like they're a little frazzled right now offensively trying to get a stop on the defensive end. Well they got to be tired man. They have hustled this whole game and, and uh, they look a little red in the cheeks so they, we'll see if they've got enough in the tank to keep that defensive up. Also just a status note, Bannon Collins playing with four fouls as well. Gets swung over to Kemp on the wing. Almost stolen by Springer. She was about a, a fingernail away from getting that steal. 
Ava Boss going inside, at elbow jump shot, no good, rebounded. Who's got it? Controlled inside by St. Peter. Hunter mm -hmm. St. Peter, that, that is, for the Gladiators, and that'll be the second team foul on the Raiders. And that was Carly Eaton. Carly Eaton, that's only her second personal foul. So she's not really in any danger of disqualification through following out. And it's two fouls for the Raider team, three fouls for the Gladiators. One minute, 10 seconds to go in this one. Hold on to your hats, folks, or just hang on to your chair if you're watching from your seat. Inside pass, Spranger, no good. Fight for the rebound, controlled by Eaton. And with 54 seconds left, Wright has it, gets a ball screen from Collins, going down the middle, Wright's fouled by Spranger and Wright will go to the free throw line. Yeah, she's got a lot of basketball IQ, high IQ. She uh, kind of had an opening there and she drove it. And like I said, either good things happen, you make the basket or you, you take the foul. And she took B, sends her to the line here maybe to tie this one up or go ahead. I'd say the difference so far in the last minute and a half is the offensive execution for the Raiders has been a little bit more on point. As you can hear, a pin drop in the gymnasium right now as I had to kind of quiet my yeah. voice. I oh. didn't, didn't want to yeah. try and disrupt anything, but it, it got really, really quiet. It was like you're down at St. Francis, 9 o'clock mass. As, <laughs> as Wright evens the game at 29 points apiece, 45 seconds remaining. And that looked like a travel, too. St. Coach Peter's Kepke kind of jumping find, out of his shoes here. What do you think he wants? He's got like a... I'd say a 20-inch vertical out here on the <laughs> sideline <laughs> trying to get trying to get a call. He wanted, he wanted a timeout, but St. Francis beat him to it. Well, 39 seconds remaining to decide this one, 29 to 29 apiece. And for the Raiders, Abby Wright has 19 of their 29 points. Man. So we're going to go ahead and proclaim it that Abby Wright is that player of the game for the Raiders. So far for the Gladiators, that player of the game, that's going to be awarded to Sophie Hardy. She's been a presence inside offensively and defensively guarding Abby Wright and assuming a lot of those offensive rebounds Sophie Hardy has. And she's also got a couple and one opportunities forcing a lot of uh, fouls on the Raiders inside. So those are two players of the game tonight, Sophie Hardy and Abby Wright for each respective team. 39 seconds remaining in this one. We'll check in with Shane Smith. Shane Smith, uh, if you're the Gladiators right now, what are you trying to do here with a best-case scenario possession? Well, best-case scenario possession, give the ball to Spranger or Hardy. I mean, they are just about as good as you can get under the basket. Let them get in there, uh, knock around Eaton or Kemp. Sure. I mean, they can battle with anybody. So that would be my goal right now is to just get him in there and try and get a quick two points and let the clock uh, go as little as possible. So far, and, you know, that's kind of the game plan for the, the Gladiators, try to get it in the hand of your best playmaker for the Raiders. If you're beat defensively, they do have fouls to give. So I'm sure that's something that head coach Kepke is addressing right now in the Raider huddle, that if you get beat on a drive or if you give up a backdoor cut, you can foul to stop and not be penalized and let the Gladiators shoot two free throws. Gladiators have no fouls to give. So the next personal foul against the Gladiators will result in Raider free throws. So two key notes to make mention of here with 39 seconds left to go in this game. Inbounded to Sophie Hardy. Finds Jetter, steps into a three, no good. A little bit of an ill-advised shot, but it's going to be off of a Raider in Gladiator basketball. Uh, Dennis, I don't know if that's the shot that the Gladiators wanted yeah, to get. I, not the one I would have suggested. They, they do so well underneath and took a, a, a low three percentage pointer. shot. Yeah, with, and they didn't need it. Inside it goes, stolen oh, by nice Collins. steal by Collins. It was trying to get. Watch out from behind. And it's a timeout. I mean, we've got a timeout before. Oh, foul. baby, that was close. It was, a, it, was a, it was a timeout as these teams are going back and forth. Dennis, I hope you loaded those batteries in your pacemaker tonight. Uh, I tell you. We got a 29-29 game between Raiders and Gladiators, and uh, 
I well, know. If I'm going to go, it's going to be while we're playing St. Francis. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> well, let's not have that happen anytime soon, huh? <laughs> I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better game tonight. 29-29. It was 14-12 to at halftime. So the Raiders have won this second half by two points as both teams giving it their all tonight on the defensive end. We've only seen three three-pointers made combined by each team. Two by the Raiders, one by the Gladiators. It's just been a knock them down, drag them out kind of slugfest as we've seen a lot of fouls, a lot more uncalled fouls. And only 60 points about for the for both total. So it'll be interesting to see which Co Coach Kepke pulls out of his uh, hat here with 23.6 seconds to go, tie ball game. Do you shoot for the last, do you wait for the last shot? Do you try to... Uh, Rush the shot, look for the look for the penalty call, foul call. A lot of ways you can play this last uh, last few seconds. A little final note there. Gladiators with no fouls to give. Raiders will probably hold for the last shot here, and we're either going to have a Raider win or overtime, I would imagine, as that's Ooh. not what the Gladiators wanted to do there. Uh, that it was Sidney Peters who fouled Anna Kemp. So Anna Kemp will go to the free throw line for two free throws. New this year in high school basketball on the fifth team foul. No more one and one. It's two shots. Yeah, that'd uh, be a heck of a way to win for Charlevoix, but it'd be a win. That was, uh, that was I thought, a ticky-tack foul from what they've let go tonight. I thought that was a little bit light, but oh well. And it gets quiet in here once again. First shot for Kemp is no good. <laughs> Off the back of the rim and uh, Gladiator fans uh, letting out a big exhale there. As yeah. This is the. <laughs> this one's just as big, probably bigger. Big shot by Kemp, no <laughs> good. Off the, off the, I mean, you just gotta love the way that this game is unfolding as both teams, uh, <laughs> both teams with some errors in the last. Both teams with errors in the last 10 seconds. Raiders missing two free throws. Gladiators with a little bit of an ill-advised three-pointer and then the turnover. So early on in the season, both teams kind of going through those situational growing pains, if you will, in late-game situations. Shane, I know you had a point that you wanted to make there. Well, it was a light-hearted one. Dennis, I think you're going to appreciate this one. I feel like there's somebody around up in the rafters with a remote control for each of these buckets, <laughs> moving it around, keeping the ball from going in. I mean, this is just incredible so far to you guys, how these shots, I mean, they seem to be gimmies at some points. They bounce around and out. The toughest ones are the ones that go in. I mean, there seems to be no rhyme or reason to this game so far. Yeah, there's no, been no rhythm to this game at all, I don't think, tonight here, just because of, I think, St. Francis' great defense, kind of swarming defense. And Charlevoix, their offense has kind of come and gone. Uh, but uh, with that being said, it's a pretty good ball game. The second one, second night this week, we've had a great ball game. Here tied, nine seconds to go. Traverse City with the inbounds pass, see if they can score anything, even a foul. So Charlevoix can, can do foul. can foul. That's they, what I might do. Wait three, four seconds and follow them again. So if you if you foul right now by the Raiders, you can use up some of the clock. Yep. Use that to your advantage. Yep. Two, Just not while they're shooting. Yes. Two fouls to give for the Raiders. Want to make that a point as it's inbounded to Spranger. I'd foul right now. And she is going to probably take the last shot of the game. Two, one. Now, Sadis is going to put it up, not before the buzzer, and we're headed to OT. A little bit of free basketball here from Charlevoix, Michigan. Gladiators and Raiders, 32 minutes wasn't enough to determine the winner between these two teams. So we're going to put a couple more minutes on the clock and roll it out there once again. I don't know if we'll have a tip-off or um, a baseline or sideline out of bounds to start the overtime period due to some uh, rule changes so far in in the in the high school basketball overtime period but listen want to let you know that overtime tonight brought to you by fresh coast sliders in charlevoix fresh coast yeah. sliders uh, premium hand crafted gourmet sliders located at the back lot over in charlevoix michigan so whether you're a native to charlevoix or if you're a gladiator fan tuning in whenever you visit charlevoix stop over to fresh coast sliders at the back lot for some of the best tasting sliders you'll ever have. Not to mention their uh, voluminous selection of 
beverages. Okay, good call. That's uh, at the back lot in Charlevoix. It's a proud sponsor of our overtime, first overtime that we've had this year. Did but you like the use of voluminous? I did. That was, that was good. I just have to make mention of how Dennis has his priorities straight. <laughs> <laughs> I used ubiquitous last night, Shane. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Dennis, what was the word that I used uh, a couple weeks ago? Oh, what was that? We kind of got a little. Uh, we got a little off whirful. track. We got a whirlful thing going, kind of. Well, we got extra basketball here. Four minutes on the clock. We're going to tip it off once again. Now, Sadis and Wright, four minutes to determine who wins this one in the first conference game for both of these teams. And we're underway overtime from Charlevoix. Tip controlled by Turner. In, or Excuse me. It's uh, Hardy in the Gladiators. Inside it goes to Hardy, a little 1-4 set by the Gladiators. She's going to go ISO against Collins. I, I think that's a smart play design going against the Raider with four fouls. Offensive rebound fought for off of a couple of shoes. It's going to be Raider basketball on the possession arrow there, Dennis. And, you know, Gladiators going right at Bayani Collins. I'd say that's a scripted play to go against the defender with four fouls. Yeah, if she goes out here in overtime, uh, Charlotte Chancellor's are pulling a victory off here, I think dropped by about 40%. So pretty easy there why you'd want to target her to not be on the court here when uh, push comes to shove. Inside it goes to Collins. She swings it around the perimeter. Kemp to Eaton. Raider basketball now with three minutes, 15 seconds in the fourth, or excuse me, overtime as another bump. And Kemp will go to the free throw line once again. It looked like... Sydney? Hardy? No, I think it was on Sydney Peters. Okay. You know, I think what's going on is the, the Gladiators are used to the physicality that's been allowed in this game up to this point, and it's kind of shifted. It has. In the last They've got it called it a little tighter here the last few minutes, I agree. Free throw by Kemp is good. So Raiders go up 30 to 19. 29. Oh, yeah. I apologize. 30 to 29. I got your back, man. Kemp second free throw. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she got the club bounce there. Yes, yeah, she did. It's 31 to 29. Raiders over the Gladiators. Five on the floor for the Gladiators is Hardy, St. Peter, and Nausadis, Spranger. And with the ball right now driving in is Jensen. She has it stolen. Up the floor goes to Collins. Collins being tracked down by a host of oh, gladiators. Yeah. And Collins puts it off the glass for two more points. So Raiders go up four over the gladiators. Gladiators working around the perimeter. Olivia Hardy, excuse me, Sophie Hardy. That's her older sister. Boy, uh, and a shot dropped Adriana in by Springer. Springer. She's, uh, she's been kind of hot. If there was one player offensively that's been pretty hot tonight, it's Springer for St. Francis. Shout out to uh, Olivia Hardy if you're listening. I just gave you a shout out because uh, your, your sister's making some plays out here on the floor. Olivia Hardy and I went to Michigan State together, so shout out to her if she's tuning in tonight. Raiders now looking to try and take some time off the clock. One minute and 53 seconds remaining. And either force the Gladiators to foul, and if the Gladiators find a Raider that they want to designate as that free throw shooter, they'll probably take that foul when they get the opportunity. Yeah, so far, crunch time free throws. Anna Kemp's gone one of four from the free throw line, and that's who the Gladiators choose to foul. Hunter St. Peter gives the foul, so Kemp will go back to the line for two more free throws. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I'd have fouled right then. Obviously, it's only a two-point game. And uh, I don't know if you really needed to do that. I thought St. Francis' defense has been uh, good enough where they could have looked toward a uh, interception or takeaway, but chose to foul. First free throw, no good for Kemp. So she'll have one more here to make it a three-point game with a make at the line. Spins it. Three dribbles, spins it again. Here's the shot, no oh. good, too strong. 
And it's controlled by Hardy, but she stepped, oh, stepped out, out, out of the bounds. bounds line. Oh, my gracious. I, I, looked like right in the corner. Right in the corner. She, she, she had the ball. Yep. Just tried to slow down before running out of bounds, and she wasn't able to do so as the Raiders maintained possession after Kemp wasn't able to make a free throw. But Raiders catching a break. That foul Kemp again. She's kind of having a cold streak on the free throw line. We'll see who the Gladiators choose to send to the line as it's Ava Boss. Who's oh, that's And it's stolen by Springer. Springer with a one on one going against Collins. Springer up in, counted oh, in the foul. No. And Collins is just fouled out. Springer coming back with a vengeance. Oh, and it's was... tied 33 to 33. Count the basket. She's going to the line, and that is the fifth foul against Bayani Collins. And she's gone. Dennis, you said it earlier, without Collins on the floor, Raider chances greatly decrease. So that's a two for one. At the, oh, no, that was double a, whammy. That was a double if whammy. If you're a Raider fan, if you're a Gladiator fan, it's a BOGO. Yeah, you get the basket, was. Was. the free throw, and the opportunity to foul out one of Charlevoix's better players in Collins. And well, that lackadaisical cross court pass kind of set that up. And well, you, you can't I, do that with St. Francis. You and I were talking about the Raiders potentially having to foul, or excuse me, the Gladiators having right. to foul, and they got the best of both worlds yeah. there. They got the steal, so they didn't have to foul, got the tie, and now an opportunity to take the lead, and they fouled out one of the better Raider players in doing so. Yeah. So, Of all the things in the world, the two worst things that could have happened in the world good, against Charlevoix, they both happened yeah. on, on one play, so... We'll see what happens here. Their Springer, their biggest scorer here in the game, I believe. Uh, yeah, Springer doing a lot of it. Uh, doing a lot of damage to Charlevoix. Springer and Hardy, the two gladiators leading the way. See if he can uh, pay off the three-point play. No, no good. Oh, But a lane violation called against, I believe it was called against Springer. The shooter, so yeah. Even if that would have dropped it would have been nullified. Well, St. Francis got the rebound, too, so that was a, a big call. A big call. So one minute, 11 seconds to go. Collins on the bench. I think it's going to rely on Abby Hart. I'm sorry, not Abby Hart. Who am I thinking about? Right. Abby Wright. Yep. Yep. Being guarded by Hardy, gets a screen from Boss, and that's an illegal screen called against Ava Boss. Man, did she deck wait, wait, was Sophie it? Hardy? Yeah, it's got to be an illegal screen. I didn't see it, but, man, uh, Hardy hit the floor hard. I didn't see what happened just before that. Yeah, it was just a, a moving screen, Dennis. Um, nothing, nothing dirty or... Uh, she with got malicious, with, Yeah, nothing with malicious intent um, involved on that uh, possession. Still tie score. Hardy trying to get the cobwebs out of her head after that. She hit the floor pretty hard. Again, I didn't see just what happened that put her there, but that drew the foul. As the Gladiators now have this one to Nausadis. She'll drive into the baseline, get it to Hardy at the elbow. Hardy directing traffic, now posts up right, trying to spin around, turn around, gets it out to Spranger. Great defense by Wright on Hardy. Spranger goes in the far side corner. Gladiators trying to use as much clock as possible. Hardy has it, nice cut inside. It goes to Spranger, no good off the glass. Fouled, and that will send Carly Eaton to the free throw line. Not, not a foul that you want to commit if you're a Gladiator fan. That wasn't very subtle either. That was a... I think that might have just been a frustration foul. That was a purse snatching there, man. That was a... That was a, a, a very hard foul. Um, I, I would say it was just a, a frustration foul on Adriana Spranger who kind of missed the close one inside and was trying to track down that offensive rebound. So yeah. now Carly Eaton goes to the free throw line. First free throws oh. around and down. And it's a 34-33 game with 17 seconds remaining in the overtime period. Big, but big shot here. Between these two rivals. Second shot for Eaton is around oh, and in. Oh, yeah. 
So she gets it to go. Gladiators now in a hurry. They find Spranger. Spranger with a decision to make as she gets it over in the far side corner to Peters. Peters drives, finds Hardy for the putback, and it's in. This eight-footer goes for Hardy, and we're tied up at 35 apiece once again. Gladiators and Raiders deadlocked with six seconds remaining in the overtime period. Well, that, that was the reason Collins, you know, Collins not out there. That enabled that shot there. They, again, miss her defensively and offensively, but you got to play with who you got out there. But, man, we could, uh, six seconds left here, Charlevoix with the ball. And big time assist and big time shot. It was Sydney Peters who created that shot for Hardy, and Hardy wasted no time, caught it and knocked it down, no hesitation. And Hardy has been the spark plug for that gladiator engine in this second half. So Charlevoix still has one more foul to give. Uh, no. No, they're both no, in the shoot. Both, both teams will both shoot shooting. upon the next foul. So Charlevoix with four team fouls. St. Francis with five team fouls. Actually, they don't go over five now. I believe the Gladiators actually have seven team fouls in this quarter, but uh, no need to keep uh, tally over five as the Gladiators are working. Shot up by right, no good, and no. we got another... Four minutes of basketball. Double coming, overtime. Coming to you live. Dennis, do we have a double overtime sponsor? We're going to step aside and we think do? about who we got. We're going to hear it for our impressed. friends at the Traverse City Cherry Capital Airport. We'll be back in 15 seconds after this. Now's the time to fly from your northern Michigan hometown Cherry Capital Airport, TVC. TVC Airport will get you to your dream destination anywhere in the world. Visit tvcairport.com now. I'm sponsor. And and here we are. Welcome to double overtime of high school basketball on Next Level Broadcasting. We were searching for a double overtime sponsor, and we found one from our local Berkshire Hathaway real estate agent, Dennis Elverson. So I Dennis, volunteered. Dennis, we're going to have to send you a bill for the double <laughs> overtime sponsor as we've got a 35-35 tie between Gladiators and Raiders from Charlevoix High School. If one overtime period wasn't enough for you, how about a second helping? Uh, kind of like some Thanksgiving leftovers. Uh, you know, maybe on Thanksgiving you ate your initial meal, came back for leftovers, and then you watched the Lions lose, and then you came back for a second helping. I just hope somebody went out and turned the, the Trevor City St. Francis bus off. <laughs> As we got another four minutes here to decide who wins this one. As the Gladiators and Raiders are... Playing another, essentially another quarter of basketball, eight minutes in totality with these overtime periods cumulatively as the Gladiators work it to the near side. Us driving in is Jensen off of a Raider, tipped out of bounds, and it will be Gladiator basketball. I thought uh, Abby Wright drew the charge there. She was, she was there in position. And... Uh, Refs might just not get involved here the rest of this one. I don't know. Replacing Jensen is St. Peter for the Gladiators. And it's inbounded to Adriana Spranger. She rotates it around the perimeter. Sydney Peters to Narcedes. Narcedes with the baseline jump shot. Nice hustle by Hardy. And Peters gets it back. Narcedes puts up another shot. And it's offensive rebounded by Spranger. Gladiators with two offensive rebounds on this possession and are going to reset and kind of get this offense settled down a bit. Peters drives baseline, shut off nicely by Eaton. Over to Springer on the perimeter. Inside it goes to Hardy. Hardy back up top to Springer. She'll pull the three-pointer around, bounces, no good. Offensive rebound controlled by Nausadis. Possession arrow favoring the Raiders. And the Raiders get a stop after a couple of offensive rebounds by that Gladiator offense. And uh, Raider fans, a big exhale here in Charlotte. Well, again, the Raiders miss Collins so much. And that last, that last interaction there kind of proved my point. But then and there's Abby Wright. Oh, in and out. That'd have been nice. Got a shout out on the text in line from Steve. Uh, well, it's Carly Eaton's grandfather, uh, Steve. And Steve, uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce your last name because I'm, I'm probably going to mispronounce it. So uh, 
Thanks for tuning in, Steve. Ooh. Want to want to apologize a little bit about our uh, camera difficulties there for that first gladiator possession of double overtime, but we've got things sorted out now. Didn't miss anything in terms of scoring wise. It's still 35 to 35. Now you can tell the old legs are about shot. Abby Wright, uh, uh, well short on that free throw attempt. Free throwing is about 60% legs, but when your legs are about shot. But she regrouped and made the second one. So it's 64-65 now. Raiders up by one point. They're 66, 30, wow, 36 to 35. I think my mind's about shot <laughs> going into the second overtime here as the Gladiators have it on the perimeter to Adriana Spranger over to Peter. She'll drive baseline. Reverse layup is blocked by Wright, and she controls for the Raiders. Opportunity for the Raiders to go by up by three or four points with a basket. And Kemp has it. Far side it goes to Meadows. Almost stolen and a jump ball possession. Oh, that arrow. was pretty quick. That was a quick whistle on the jump ball, I will say that. And that the Gladiators are going to be the beneficiary of that quick whistle. That was really quick. As Spranger tied up the Raider ball handler, and it'll be Gladiator possession. Well, folks, don't go to bed yet. That's right. Still a lot of game left with one minute, 50 seconds left. Little baseline curl pin down and not able to get it to drop with Spranger. Abby Wright controls it, and she's in a hurry going coast to coast. All the way, leans in, no and good. And she gets her own rebound, put back, count it, and the foul. Abby Wright making an impact here. Potential three-point play impending as she'll head to the free throw line. Big time play by Wright. Got yeah. the rebound. Took Never it. gave up. Never yeah. gave up on it. Took it coast to coast. Missed it. Got her own rebound. Put it back up. We'll see if she has some uh, juice left in the legs to make this free throw. Free throw is a little short. Rebounded by Spranger. Good rebound. Gladiators now pushing it up the floor. They get it to Peters. Peters is going to drive. Finding a oh, well, stolen. Away. Stolen by Kemp. A good, great defensive anticipation. And Kemp has a crossover and we've got an inadvertent whistle hunter st peter yeah what happened there i it looked like the free throw line came up and knocked her down or well they're saying the kepke called the timeout okay i i thought that there was a whistle for for an injury yeah everybody's kind of looking around the st francis coach was wondering what was going on we were wondering what's going on we didn't yeah, catch uh, I, I mean we're too far away up here to get an explanation, but I think it was a 30-second timeout taken by Coach Kepke. You think even before the inbounds? I mean, or, or before before the – I think just after Kemp stole the ball, okay. he took the timeout to try to set something up here. It's a three-point game. Raiders on top with one minute, 24 seconds remaining. So if, we, if, if we had a double overtime sponsor – or excuse me, if we had a triple overtime sponsor, uh, that'd be something for the record books, but – so you try to put this one on ice if you're Charlevoix. You got a three-point lead, buck 24 to go, second overtime. Your, your players are about shot. It's been a long night on the floor for a lot of them. As Kemp has it, finds Meadows for the Raiders, now into the hands of Abby Wright. Abby Wright back to Kemp. Kemp with the floater off the glass, no good. Rebounded, controlled by Hunter St. Peter. Up to Spranger, one-on-two break for her. Puts it down, puts it in, and it's a one-point game, 38 to 37. You don't want to be in that corner. No, you don't. Raiders do not have any timeouts left, and it's a foul called on the floor. Who's it going to be against? Push against who? Hard, uh, number three there got it. I think it's a push against Hunter St. Peter, and that will send which Raider to the free throw line, Dennis? One... One Raider will go to the free throw line as the beneficiary of that free throw or that foul call. It's going to be Ava Boss. Ava Boss at the line. That was uh, on the far side there, but that would looked a little rough. Over as there. as a timeout taken by head coach Adam Warren, 30 second variety. Actually, full timeout variety. 50 seconds remaining in this one. When we come back, Ava Boss going to the free throw line for the Raiders and Dennis. The free throw line's 
not been the friend of the Raiders so far in this game. No, we haven't. Ava Boss hasn't been in this position before either tonight. Uh, obviously, uh, these made two free throws, if she's able to pull that off, would be a significant uh, situation for St. Francis with only 50 seconds remaining in the second OT, the second stanza, the second chapter of this one. It's well, I mean, you could have, you could have had a, you know, a 12 chapter novel. Yeah, this if was, you, you could have read one. Yeah, if you wanted to bring it to this game because, well, it's been a if long you, one. If you add everything up, it'll be a total of five quarters of basketball that these two teams have played. And I'll say this. These two teams are very similar. Yep. Uh, you know, their heart intensity, we talked about it earlier. Neither one of these teams really has a dead-eye shooter. No, no shooter. Having, having to do it a lot with rebounding, easy baskets, offensive hustle. rebounding, hustle. And... Rolling around on the floor, yeah. high intensity. First free throw for Boss is good. Oh yes, that's big. So Boss drops the first free throw. Gladiators this one's need huge. to, uh, yeah, make. Gladiators need to get a play, which they probably just, just drew up. Boss's second oh, free throw, good, baby. Ice in the veins of Ava Boss as she makes two free throws. It's a three-point game. Springer driving baseline, no good. Rebounded inside. Who's coming out of there with it? It's no, off of, Charlevoix ball. It's off of a gladiator. It'll be Charlevoix basketball. Abby Wright was in there mixing it up. I'm telling you, my favorite player out there is Abby Wright. She has played one heck of a game. As Anna Kemp breaks for the inbounds pass, Kemp being guarded by St. Peter. Kemp breaks the timeline, and it's 35 seconds remaining. Charlevoix is going to anticipate being fouled here, and there's a foul going against... St. Uh, Peter? Yeah, St. Peter picks up the foul, sending Abby Wright to the free throw line, Dennis. So with a couple of makes at the free throw line, Ooh, this that, could really that'd be big. ice this game. Uh, well, I shouldn't say ice the game. It's a one-possession game. And we're looking for an updated tally. Abby Wright now with 22 points in the contest. Played the whole game, never came out once. And we're in, the, like you said, the fifth quarter. First free throw for Wright is oh, right down. Oh, nothing but net. Right down the middle. So she gets that one and extends it to a four-point lead. Both coaches now, Kepke and Warren, giving their team directions from the sidelines. Second free oh, throw short. is short by Wright. Uh, that I didn't hit anything. That got, yeah. Yeah, that one. It's got to hit the, at least the rim or the uh, ball, ball goes to the other side. So the difference between a four-point and a five-point game, in a four-point game, the Gladiators can go for a quick two here. Kind of changes the game plan as if they were down five. Spring, or excuse me, Peters going inside. Offensive rebound, no good. Controlled by Eaton. And Eaton settles things down, finds the hands of Abby Wright. And Wright dribbling through and is fouled by Sydney Peters. So Wright will go back to the free throw oh, line. I but need a rest. I need a nap right now. This, this game has been uh, excellent. I'd have paid money to watch this tonight. We got, we got the best seats. You got us the best seats in the house this year, Charles. We're right next to the action, and this is one heck of a basketball game. Want to remind everybody, as Abby Wright makes the first of two free throws, whether you're a Gladiator fan or a Raider fan, tomorrow night you can find our coverage of both teams' games as Wright's second free throw is good. Both teams' game tomorrow, Gladiator boys versus Jordan Raiders versus Harbor Springs on nextlevelbroadcasting.net. As Wright controls the rebound, and that's going to do it. Wright fouled hard by Hardy, and Wright will go to the free throw line to uh, put the finishing touches on this game. But like I said, tomorrow night, the Raiders home versus the Harbor Springs Rams. That'll be a shootout. And then St. Francis will host the East Jordan Red Devils. You can go to nextlevelbroadcasting.net. Watch both those games simultaneously while they're going on. I love doing basketball games at... Traverse City, St. Francis Gym. They treated, when I was uh, doing radio, they treated us just so well. I love going back there doing games. And the second of two free throws goes down for Abby Wright. She's got 24 points in the contest as the Gladiators are unable to get a shot off. You know, and, that's a big win. And this game is going to be won in over, or double overtime by the Raiders with a final score 44 to 37. Yeah, very 
intensely fought game tonight between these two teams. It was a pleasure to watch this five quarter in totality battle as we had two periods of overtime to decide the winner between these two conference teams. For everybody who was tuning in, you really tuned in, got a whale of a ball game to watch from the corner of your couch or the edge of your seat, or if you were just kind of listening along while the game was being streamed, we thank you for making us a part of your Thursday night here. Dennis, any final thoughts for each of these two teams before they uh, head out of the gymnasium? This is one of those games where you hated to have somebody go away a loser. I mean, they both played their hearts out. They left everything on the floor. Uh, Trevor City St. Francis coming up here, you know, excellent defense, some excellent players. You know, you play as much basketball as, you, as these young ladies played tonight with the same intensity in the last 15 seconds as you had in the first 15 seconds. That's saying a lot about the heart of both of these teams. It certainly is. As one more time before everyone, before we sign off so everyone knows, Raiders home tomorrow versus Harbor Springs. You can catch that game on Charlotte Raider Athletics YouTube channel or on nextlevelbroadcasting.net. Gladiators home tomorrow night versus the East Jordan Red Devils. That'll be on Next Level Broadcasting YouTube page and on the nextlevelbroadcasting.net website. So, so Shane and me here tomorrow yeah, night. And then and Charles going to be in Traverse. I'll be down in Traverse City for that one and looking forward to it. For everybody making us a part of your Thursday night, thank you for tuning in and watching this fantastic game between the Gladiators and Raiders for Charles Strail, myself, Shane Smith, Dennis Halverson, Jimmy Deskamps, running our stats and sideline camera this evening. We Steve. thank you. And Steve Weber up top in the crow's nest. We thank you for tuning in. This has been a Next Level Broadcasting production. Good night, everyone.